The novel The Age of Innocence, written by Edith Wharton, was first published in 1920. It was first published as a serial in four parts, and then as a book later in the same year. The novel made Wharton the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction, which she received in 1926. The story begins with Newland Archer at the opera, which is a popular gathering place for the social elite of New York society. May Welland has just agreed to marry him, and he is overjoyed. In May's opera box, Archer notices a strange, yet attractive lady. It is the Countess Ellen Olenska, who is May's cousin. After her divorce from her husband, rumors circulated that she had an extramarital affair with her husband's secretary. Archer sees the polar opposite of his timid and sheltered bride to be in her, since Ellen is confident and outgoing. Newland is initially annoyed by Ellen's presence, as well as the possibility that her presence will have an impact on the standing of his future bride's family. But, as time goes on, he becomes fascinated by her worldly ways, as well as by how daring she is in defying the established rules of New York high society. As Newland's admiration for the Countess grows, so does his skepticism about May's suitability for marriage. When he pays her a visit, he is delighted to discover that she has decorated her home in a lovely and romantic manner. In their conversation, Archer notices that Ellen is unaware of the negative perception she has in New York society, and she asks for his assistance in gaining an understanding of the situation. However, she has already had an impact on his way of thinking. Ellen's decision to divorce was a difficult one. Because of Count Olinsky's social standing, the other members of her family are terrified of scandal and disgrace, which causes a social upheaval. Divorce is unacceptable, while living apart can be tolerated. A law partner of Newland's approaches him with the request that he dissuade Countess Olenska from proceeding with the divorce in order to save the Welland family's reputation. He succeeds, but in the process of doing so, he comes to genuinely care about her. Newland begs May to elope and hasten their wedding date because he is afraid of falling in love with Ellen. However, May refuses to do so. After a few weeks, Newland confesses his feelings for Ellen, with whom he corresponds. Ellen, however, is terrified that their relationship will harm May, and she does not want him to abandon May for her. May's telegram is received by Newland, in which she agrees to marry him sooner rather than later. Newland and May are engaged to be married. He makes numerous unsuccessful attempts to forget Ellen. His social marriage isn't very good, and the social life he used to enjoy has become boring and empty. Despite the fact that Ellen lives in Washington and has maintained a distance from him, he is unable to stop loving her. They cross paths in Newport, Rhode Island, while he and May are there. Newland learns that Count Olinsky wishes for Ellen to return to him but she has refused, despite the fact that her family wishes for her to reconcile with her husband and return to Europe. The family, dissatisfied with her independence, has cut off her financial support, as the Count had done previously. Newland is desperate to get away from May and be with Ellen, and he is obsessed with finding a way to finally be with her. He tells Ellen that he has given up hope of ever becoming her husband, and he begs her to run away with him but she refuses. Ellen is then summoned to New York City to care for her elderly grandmother, who accepts her decision to remain apart and agrees to reinstate her allowance. When Ellen returns to New York and is subjected to renewed pressure from Newland, she finally gives in and agrees to meet with him in secret to confirm their relationship. Ellen, on the other hand, has made the decision to return to Europe, and Newland discovers this shortly after their conversation. When May announces that she and Newland will be throwing a farewell party for Ellen, Newland makes the decision to abandon May and travel with Ellen to Europe on his own initiative. That night, after the party, Newland makes the decision to inform May that he is leaving her for Ellen. She interrupts him to inform him that she discovered she is pregnant that morning. She reveals that she had informed Ellen of her pregnancy two weeks prior, despite her uncertainty at the time. Her motive for this was clearly because she had a suspicion about the affair, 
and that Ellen's return to Europe is the result of this new development. Despite being trapped, Newland makes the difficult decision to stay with May rather than follow Ellen, putting his love aside for the sake of his child. Newland and his eldest son are in Paris 26 years later, following May's death. After learning that his mother's cousin lives in Paris, the son has made arrangements to pay a visit to Ellen in her Paris apartment. As the prospect of seeing Ellen again dawns on Newland, he is taken aback. When Newland arrives outside the apartment building, he sends his son up to meet Ellen alone, while he remains outside, keeping an eye on the balcony of her apartment. As much as Newland considers going up, he ultimately decides against it and returns to his hotel without seeing her. He explains his actions by deciding that things are more real to him there, than if he had gone up to see her. If you have any suggestions of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.